about an hour and a bit later and uh, I'm going to slow this big caribou. Uh, barren ground caribou, lots of bugs. Um, got to put my rain jacket on because they were biting right through my uh, merino wool. So we got the quarters off. We're just looking at the rib meat and tenderloins on the other side or the back straps on their side, tenderloins. Uh, my shooting wasn't the best. It was 405 Winchester, 220 yards. I had to shoot from kneeling. Um, so I got him a little far back with one shot, just out of the lungs into the liver. We'll, we'll take this meat away and put it by the water where we're getting picked up, away from our tent. Uh, we can just get away, get, stay away from bears for 24 hours. Uh, we got our meat. Or actually not 24 hours, more like 12 hours. Uh, this knife is actually working pretty well. The revolver. SOG revolver. Uh. Okay, what did I learn on the scarab hunt and other hunts since my last knife video, which is years ago now? My uh, old knife videos, I used to talk about the folding knife, and I don't use the folding knives as often. I still do sometimes. I find some of the criticisms about them getting dirty and uh, uh, hard to clean and all that sort of stuff are true, um, especially if you're if you're getting multiple animals. Sometimes you got to clean that up with a steam cleaner when you get home. So if you're going after one animal, they're great. Sheep hunting, they're great, but. Um, I'll, I've started to use uh, more fixed knives or hybrid knives like the knife I talked about in the video was the SOG revolver. This is a 440A quality knife. I can't remember which the steel is but it's somewhere around there. Uh, what I like about it is it's long. That's about four and a half inches long or that's the folding knives are about three and a half inches long and it's thin. And for gutless skinning gives you the nice long sweeps when you're cutting off the front shoulder and you're cutting off the uh, back quarters. You let nice long sleep, you get nice cuts. Uh, and it's thin enough from here to here to go in between the ribs. So that was the only knife I used on that trip. Uh, the disappointment of that knife is, once again, a gut hook. It works on the legs of the caribou. Once you get in the body, the hair is too dense and it starts to ball up. So I never really get much use out of a gut hook. It's more of a good theoretical piece than any knife. And uh, the saw, too thick. It's a nice idea. It'd be nice to have that all in one. It's a, it's a really nice idea, but that, that's a bit too thick. Um, and I find, because it's a hybrid, I'm not sure I trust it that much to be super strong. So if we're going through ribs, I'd rather use uh, find the cartilage joint and have a little bit of strength in my knife so that I can kind of get right through there with the knife. So that's good. But uh, if I had to do over again, I wouldn't buy one. Um, I do like a long knife. Uh, I've had some luck with this knife. This is the Cutco. The double D serrations actually are, are not a big fan of serrations, but these are shallow enough serrations that it works uh, much like a, a steak knife uh, through meat. It works pretty well. It doesn't, uh, doesn't hang up on stuff because they're so thin, and yet it does. Uh, have a noticeable increase in blade uh, sharpness retention and I love that big thick you wouldn't think it but that's a really comfortable great tacky handle and they're relatively cheap uh, they're still overpriced I think they're about a hundred bucks because uh, you have to buy it through their ridiculous uh, how, the, how they sell things uh, through uh, their representatives uh, I think that'd be a great knife at 50 bucks at a hundred bucks it's starting to become Maybe not so great, but if you can pick one of those up cheap enough, that's uh, that's pretty nice. Uh, I wish it was just a little longer, just a little longer, but it's entirely usable. The knife I've liked the best uh, for gutless skinning. Um, probably the most popular knife for hunting is the drop point. The drop point is a great all-around knife, especially if you're using traditional when you have to gut the animal and uh, keep things out of the guts with when you're doing a, a gutless skinning, um, you don't you really have to worry as much about it. And I really like this Spyderco. And this is a Phil Wilson design. This is made of S90V steel. 
It's an excellent steel. It keeps an edge on clean animals really, really well. A dirty moose, uh, or if you're going to go through into bone, you might get some microchipping, and that's the mechanism with which these really super hard steels will dull, where the lower carbon steels will dull through dulling. They just, uh, they just, it's wear resistance. This has enormous wear resistance. Um, so on a clean animal, and if you keep it out of, if you keep it out of the uh, the bone. And are really careful in going through cartilage. You can go through probably three, four caribou here before you have to resharpen. Um, I wish that this knife, with the exact same design, was in a just a simple carbon steel, because uh, I don't mind sharpening. But I like the design of that knife. The Lamb Skinner by Victorinox is another one I really like. So that's kind of the shape of the knife that I like for cutlass skinning. Um, you just have to look at your angle so you keep out of the guts. Uh, other things I learned on this trip is uh, tag bags. They're great. They're light. This is a whole set of bags here for, uh, for a caribou. Um, these are the 24 by 44 bags. I used the 60 inch bags for this trip because uh, it's possible we could have run into moose and they work really, really well. The cotton bags, uh, I do think um, under normal conditions, a cotton bag will promote crusting better. And I've done some side-by-side -side testing. So what I've started to do is use these tag, tag bags, bring the tag bags to get the animal out of the, out of the, out of the bush when you're backpacking. You can bring this whole set of bags. That's about the same volume as maybe two cotton bags. But the cotton bags, I think, are good to have in base camp and do that, to do that, uh, switch over and it's good to switch your meat anyway. Um, I think they promote drying and crusting better than the cotton bags uh, over, over time. Um, love to bring in this little sheath here is a is a great little meat thermometer to, for your meat care. And the other thing that I don't leave home without is uh, this flagging tape which really um, sometimes you've got your animal down and it allows you to find the perfect route so that you don't have to waste time trying to find where, where your animal is. So having a, having a roll of that is great. I uh, really enjoyed this uh, caribou hunt. I've got lots of meat in the freezer now. Uh, might not go moose hunting this year. Might wait till actually bison season. And uh, we got lots of meat until then. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, the quest for the perfect knife uh, continues.